Happy Friday, everybody. It, what did I say? <laughs> it sounded like an idiot. Uh, more so than normal. So the, 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 I'm going to an open house tonight. If you don't know what open house is, it's when a motorcycle club allows non-members in for libations, laughter, and general poor decisions. And uh, this clubhouse is, is, is the clubhouse of a, a club down here in South Florida that I think really, really highly of. They're, they're just great guys, and I think they sort of are the gold standard of how a motorcycle club should operate because they just they get along, and when they don't, they solve it, and they laugh. They're, they're just good dudes. Anyway, and a lot of them are going to Sturgis, so that'll be fun too. Anyway, um, they have an open house tonight, and me and two of my brothers are going to hang out with them. Maybe talk a little Sturgis so we can start their plans and stuff. But in the meantime, I'm riding the Black Knight. And the Black Knight is my douchebagger, my 16 Road Glide that's all over the top done up with the air ride and the, and the liners and the saddlebags that look like a whorehouse and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I have some stuff that's been, been here a while that I ordered before I even went to, on that trip to Europe for work. Um, so we're going to do some stuff like what I call the fang lights by the windshield. We're going to upgrade the LED turn signal lights. Um, and I have a horn because this one rattles. But I don't know if I have time to do that today. And we got to clean that, stick them off, and just give it a bit of a bath, you know? Not that I'm a stickler for cleanliness, but it looks like I have been licking the rear of this bike, you know? Because I've been climbing all over it the last couple of days, fixing that brake switch thing that I was dealing with. So let's get on that. All right, so step one on today's projects was get that crap off the frickin' saddlebags where the old taillights were at. If, you, if you're new to this bike or new to the channel even, welcome. But this bike I bought from a buddy of mine who had it built twice in the time he owned it. <laughs> Second time from a shop down in Miami and they put these like lights that just went right under the lids. Not these, these are the uh, you know Custom Dynamics bags lights. They were, these are nice and slim. These were big like hockey puck looking things and they were I don't like them. <laughs> they were big dots of LED, you know what I mean? And then when you hit the brakes, the ones in the middle, like, they just weren't very cool in my opinion. So we put the plasma rods on, those little strips you're seeing there. Well, that left adhesive, so I used Goo Gone to dissolve all that stuff. How did, what a not interesting thing to talk about. But anyway, that's what I did. Uh, the back end's still real cloudy and stuff because it's covered in Goo Gone, which is basically just citrus oil. It's basically just oil from orange peels that dissolves, stick them, but it's not the best stuff. My favorite was the, uh, Turtle Wax used to make an adhesive, or an adhesive dissolver, and I can't find it anymore. So maybe it causes you to grow a third arm now, and that's why you can't buy it anymore. Who knows? But and look at that. There's some imperfections in the paint under there. Anyway, well, whatever. This whole body's coming off, um, and I'm doing a color swap in a couple months when I get back from Sturgis. Anywho, and I'll sell this rear end on eBay to sort of offset some of the cost. But next step is to fix the front end lighting. So this bike has a stock headlight with that Harley stick-on cover thing. Uh, let me show you. That thing, you know, it's, it's adhesive, goes on over the headlight and sort of adds a painted bit of body work over the headlight. You could get it in either black or chrome. I think they still sell it. Uh, and I do think it adds something to the bike, so that's, that's not bad. But I'm going to upgrade the headlight uh, because A, I don't leave anything stock, and B, this headlight has some issues. I've seen it before. Where one of, I think it's the left light goes out. It seems to be staying on these days, but when I bought the bike, it was a known issue that it had a bum headlight, which is fine because I have, from other projects, road light headlights laying around, so I could switch it out for a stalker if I needed to, but so far it's working. So I think I'm going to do the Advan Attack headlight, the one that's sort of that Cylon Knight Rider looking thing. Um, either that or the Custom Dynamics Road Glide headlight like I have on the wife's bike. I, it depends on availability because these are actually really hard to get right now. They make it in black or chrome. and they just don't have many of those to, to, to just sort of toss me one, you know? So, um, and also this bike's all blacked out and stuff. So that sort of attack headlight might look really cool on this bike. Anyway, the other thing is those are the old, they're custom dynamics, these turn signal lights. I'm pretty sure. But they're the old ones. And I think on the left side, there's even a couple of LEDs that are out because these are probably six years old. They've been through Florida uh, hurricanes and everything else. So. This is the old style, and we're gonna switch those out for the modern Pro Beams. I can't remember what they called those. I think they just called those dynamic turn signals six, seven, eight years ago. So we'll pop those out, swap them for new ones. And I got, see the lenses are a little cloudy and effed up, so we're gonna change those for the ones that have the black trim rings too. So 
And we got the fang lights. Why is the stereo playing? Hang on. So at least it was Led Zeppelin. Um, we're going to put the lights on that go up here. I have them in black. They're white lights until the turn signals come on. Just to add a little more light to the front end. Um, and then we're pretty much done with the lighting. And then I think I will go ahead and tackle today swapping out that horn. Uh, it's an air horn, but I don't know who makes it. And it's not as good as Custom Dynamics Pro Beast. <laughs> it's not as loud, number one. Number two, it rattles. Uh, there's something in that horn that when I first bought this bike, it had a bad compensator. We swapped that out, which, you know, causes a rattle noise in the primary. But I'm riding it afterward going, the frickin' rattle's kind of still there. And it was a goddamn air horn. <laughs> so I was thinking there was something wrong with the motor, and it's the air horn jiggling around in there. Um, interestingly enough, this one isn't even powered. So the Pro Beast has a positive and negative, like any motorcycle, you know, uh, horn. But the Pro Beast has a separate positive line that runs straight to the battery on the bike to, you know, give it a little more juice and a little more loudness. That one doesn't even have that, so it can't be as good. So let's go ahead and knock those out, put those on, and we'll swap the horn probably. If you've never done these Pro Beam lights, um, this is without a doubt the easiest thing you need to your bike. So if you have a stock Road King, Road Glide, you know, anything that has this size bullet turn signal, they're pretty much all the same. I can't think of a single one that isn't. As long as they're that size of diameter. So like Road King, Road Glide, Street Glide, Ultra Classic, <laughs> Electric Glide. Yeah. She's nude behind that door. Yeah. I swear to God. <laughs> That'll teach her. Um, this just pops off, the lens just pulls off. I can probably even get it with my finger without even a screwdriver. If not, then you put a standard screwdriver and turn it and it'll pop the lens off. But I should, there you go. So there goes that. These are kind of cloudy and old. So we're gonna put, set that aside, i.e. throw them in the trash can. And then these are just sitting in here. So they were just kind of sitting in there. And then you just take your flat blade or your finger, probably even without a screwdriver, you push and you turn. Oh no, flat blade, there's actually like a tooth for you to grab a hold of there. Push and turn, there, there goes the turn signal. Um, your stockers are gonna have an amber lens and then a bulb, you just push the bulb, turn, and it comes out. And now you're ready to put in your pro beam, there ain't nothing to it. The ones I'm putting in are slightly different. There's, there's ways you can do this where you put, uh, you know, the, the LED board on a wire that sticks in there and you turn and then the lens snaps on over and you can put, put the amber back on if you want or you can put clear or smoked or, you know, whatever. But these, the ones I'm putting on, are sort of an upgraded version of the Pro Beam. They have this trim ring integrated into them. You can pop this out. You see those teeth there are bent down to hold it in. Got a nice rubber gasket, keep water out. I'm gonna plug it in and then snap that on and it's done. But you see it'll sort of make the light a little bigger, you know? So uh, I can't do this with one hand. So I'm gonna stick this in, pop that on, and we're done. But these lights are a lot brighter than the ones I just came out. Uh, we'll show you in a second. All right. so. Stuck it in, use my standard blade. There's a slot in there to a uh, standard blade. Freaking screwdriver. Uh, and then you just kind of curly cue up the wire and pop it on. Done. Now we'll see if I stuck that in right. <laughs> it is possible that you could put, I'm dropping shit over here. That's fantastic. It is possible you can put that post in not quite the right way. And there you go. So you can see right now, there's the old ones. I don't know if you can see on the camera. And the new ones. And then the central cluster there is a lot brighter yellow when you put the turn signals on. So there's the new ones, and there's the old ones. And I don't know if you can tell from the camera how much brighter it is, but it is. And then the turn signal is a lot brighter. So, all right. You do the other side, and then we'll uh, start on those fang lights on the windshield. This could be pretty sweet, the fang lights. So I did the turn signals, that's nothing to it. The fang lights, um, I was sitting there wondering if I was gonna need to take the whole fairing front cap off or not, and I'm not gonna have to. Let me show you what I mean. This is gonna be 15 minutes. So your turn signals on a road glide, they plug in up here. This is actually your turn signal plug, okay? So what happens is this turn signal is attached to the outer cap. I've done other videos on this, but if you take the outer cap off, uh, it's a screw behind your your screen, your screen uh, grill for your speaker. It's the four screws, two on either side that are on your, your little air dams there. Uh, and then the four that hold the windshield on. 
and then the one Allen bolt right there that's on the turn signals, I think, I think you can see. So you take that out, you take those four out to either side, the one behind the grill, uh, the windshield and cowl underneath, and this just comes away all one piece, and these stay with it. Um, these are bolted to this on the back side. But there's a wire that's adhesived, sort of taped, foam taped on the inside, and it comes up here and plugs into the bike right there. So this is where the fangs are gonna plug in in line. So this is gonna be easy. I don't even have to take the cap off. So what I've done is I've taken these four screws out. I've never done this, never done this before, it's nothing to it. Two screws on either side, uh, varies on year. There's only Phillips screws on this bike. You might have Torx or Allen's or whatever, but take these two and those two out. Windshield is now just sitting there, so be careful, take it off. Uh, and then your upper cowl, if you haven't done this, the, the air dam, air vent thing, that can be nerve wracking first time you do it, but all you do is you grab your hand underneath and you just pull. It's just on there with um, little spring clips that attach, uh, where the hell are the attachment points? Trust me, <laughs> they, they snap in. Um, so you just grab that and it comes right off. So uh, now I'm just gonna plug the fangs in. Essentially, they're gonna plug in line in here and then they just go on top of the windshield before you screw it back on. So uh, it's kind of idiot proof. So let's get at it. I'm gonna try and do a better job <laughs> of like how to on this because I really think these are cool. They're not crazy expensive and it's a nice upgrade. And I wanna show you if, if you don't work on your bike at all, you can do this. I promise you, you can do it. So what I was saying is when I took the windshield and the cowl off, this plug was sitting right here and I'll show you on this side. It's right here. That is your turn signal, okay? Uh, one side is the one that's on the, the fairing and the other side is the one that is, goes to the bike. Um, I believe, it doesn't matter though. <laughs> and then the light in the package at one end has a pass-through, so a male and female. So this end is gonna plug in there and this end is gonna plug in there and that's it. This is gonna be white when the bike is just on, and then it's gonna show a turn signal when you put the turn signal on. So I'll, uh, let me plug this in, because I can't do that with one hand, and then I'll show you. All right, so I plugged it in, and I just got it kind of sitting there, and yes, this is plastic film comes off. So it's just sitting there. Let me kick on the ignition and see. Yeah, okay, so, so this is a white running light that it sits here. So this is where it actually goes on the bike. And then when I put the right turn signal on, it's a sequential turn signal, like that. So it just adds just a little more safety. I think it adds some style and they look really cool, uh, but it just adds a little more safety to the bike so you're a little more noticeable going down the road. But now I'm gonna plug that one in, throw the windshield on and the cowling back on and that'll be done. Then we can do the horn and I'm ready for uh, open house tonight. All right, so front end's back together. We got the new pro beams and those fang lights. So they aren't just a light, they actually have this like piece of trim that comes with them. So I gotta straighten that, that's not straight. Or is it? Oh, it is, okay, just a, whatever. So, adds a little trim piece to the windshield and the LEDs embedded in there. And when we kick them on, we see that the front end has a lot more light to it. So, I like those things a lot. I put them on the wife's bike. You can get them in chrome or black, as you can see. Um, so they're on the wife's bike, and then also, now they're on the Black Knight. <laughs> And then we see turn signals, which I have to resync these still. Actually, I'll show you how you do that real quick. I've done this a million times, but so ignition off. Wait for the flash. They do flash with the alarm too. All right. So I'm going to do ignition on hazards, ignition off. And then let them run for a couple of minutes. And what's going to happen now is they're all going to resync. They might stop. See, now it's stopping, and they're off time. And they're going to see. They're establishing a rhythm. So they say you let it go for two minutes, but I don't think it takes two minutes. Like it's done now, you know. So then what you do to save that setting is you turn the ignition back on, you turn the hazards off, and turn the ignition off, and it saves whatever it found when it was doing that. So now all the lights are in sync, including those new uh, plasma rods in the back. So, all right, next step is to pull off that janky air horn and put on the Pro Beast. All right, so horn time. 
the horn that's on there, like I said, it, it rattles and it's not as loud and stuff. So we're doing a Pro Beast. So I've done a couple of these. I've got one on uh, the Cholo bike, the red one no one's seen for a while. Uh, the wife CVO's got one, and then now we're going to put one on the Black Knight. And I've got another one in a box to go on the Fireball bike, but seeing how the motor's getting swapped later this month and all that stuff. Later this month? There's it. We're over Saturday, July 2nd on that 131 swap, but we'll figure all that stuff out. It'll be a live stream, so you'll see me for eight and a half hours, something I'm sure you all just freaking dream of. So, um, first step is to take the single bolt nut off that holds the horn on and then just unplug it from the back of the horn. So it's a positive and negative little clips, plugs, whatever you want to call it, uh, that look like, sorry, I got out of order. So you got this nut here, which is hilarious that somebody spray painted black <laughs> to try and like, extra black it out but we're going to take this off this is going to come free and then down here on the back side down there there's two plugs around the back side and then you just unplug those this comes free looks like somebody spray painted this black too how wonderful is that and the pro beast uh hangs from there and has the same it has the same you know positive and negative terminals but then an extra 12 volt like i said before that'll run up under the tank and plug into the battery to give it enough juice to be nice and loud so We'll swap that out, then we'll run that wire. That's all there is to it. Just to show you what I was talking about, uh, after I got the compensator fixed, besides the fact this is just kind of cheesy looking, I think somebody spray painted it black or something. It just says Italy something. I don't know who makes it. But anyway, uh, listen to this. <laughs> so under load, like when you're like, again, you're doing 30 mile an hour in fourth gear and you roll it on, so the bike's digging deep, so the bike's got a rubber mounted motor, the motor's shaking a lot and this thing's on there. That is magnified and it sounds like you've got something in the low end. I mean, it actually goes tink, 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 you know. So I'm like, what is wrong with the motor? And it's this stupid freaking horn. <laughs> so, all right. Okay, before we mount it up, let's do the shake test. <laughs> no movement. <laughs> so I won't think the motor's dying. Pretty simple device. I mean, it's all pre assembled in the box. Uh, yeah, there's your power line. That needs to go to the, the positive on the battery. And then you got those two wires there that plug into those there. So, and then it hangs there, nut goes back on. This ain't complicated stuff. Um, let me throw this on and we'll be done in probably 10 minutes. All right, so we're done. Uh, I had to turn the fan on, boys and girls, I'm sorry. It's about 9,000 degrees in this garage. Uh, it says it's only 90, but I think they're missing a zero. Anywho. So the fan, the fan, <laughs> the horn is on, you can see there. Um, I mean, yeah, is it the prettiest thing? No, man, but the whole thing is full of horn. Like it, it's, it's an actual powered horn. There's a, there's a power line going up and you can see a little red wire up to figure that out because I can't stand that red wire right there, but going in and plugged into the battery. So this thing has its normal positive and negative off the bike and then a supplied power line that goes straight to the battery because it takes a whole lot of juice Can you tell the missus is behind me but doesn't want to be on the camera, but she just she just sneezed like a two-year-old? <laughs> Normally you sneeze like a dude. You're like, ah! At that time, anyway. So, horn is done, lights are done, and I gave it a bit of a horse bath, sat there with this cleaner that I really like. What's that stuff called? Um, I bought it at uh, Cycle Gear. I don't know if you can get it anywhere else, but it's called Moto Pro. People ask what I use to clean. This stuff's really good. I think I what I pay 10 bucks a can or something for it I don't know but bought a cycle gear not far from my house but that that stuff's really good um, back to what matters so parts are on lights are on let's do the ignition I gotta clean the headlight uh, turn signals all that now I I know for a fact this this microphone cannot handle this horn but we'll see what you can hear <laughs> What are they, at, at the booth at Custom Dynamics, they always have to yell horn, because that's how loud it is and it scares people. So, horn! <laughs> in person, it actually distorts your ears. Like, it's that, it's that loud. So, in Miami traffic, the missus has this on her CBO, and I swear to God, she like wants people to cut her off because she loves that horn so much. Um, anywho, so, she's done. Oh, let me show you the plasma rods. I can't remember if I showed that with a, so this is the run light. I had showed it before where they were like stuck on brake, but it's been fixed since then. So that's the plasma rods look like. Really a nice bike. I love this thing. I was thinking of something. 
I was thinking of something the other day why I like this bike so much and I was just telling the missus. So this is a 2016 Rogue Glide. Um, started as a Rogue Glide special and now it's full on miami But it's the last year of the twin cam in the Harley Touring bikes. And, but the frame, I believe, is the same. I, I don't know if the frame changed. If it did in 17, it was just to accommodate the engine mounts for the Milwaukee 8. But it's the last twin cam touring bike. And I could actually do a whole video on what it's like to ride this bike because the only, and compared to my 21 Ultra or the wife's 19 CVO Rogue Life, because the only difference between this motorcycle is twin cam motor to Milwaukee 8 motor. And all the hype about the Milwaukee 8, it's justified. It is. This bike shakes. Now, now, ha asterisk here. This is a stage five, so it's got a 110 inch kit from Harley with cams and bigger injectors and head work and all that stuff. So it's a stage five tire shredder twin cam. So maybe it shakes more, you know what I mean? But that also means it has a lot more power than it did when it was a 103. And it still doesn't feel like it's any faster than my 114, my stock 114 and my 21 Ultra. I think it would whip this bike, even though it's a stage five tire shredder. I could be wrong, but my butt dyno says they're about twins. But I still love this bike because it's the last of the old twin cam touring bikes and you can feel all those differences. This bike shakes a lot more, it vibrates a lot more. Uh, it's, it's, it's generally just doesn't handle for whatever reason. I can't describe it as well as the wife's bike does. Uh, and that's even with a really expensive dirty air suspension on it. So I don't know, but I still love this thing. I had bought it from a buddy of mine because it was too good of a deal to pass up with the plan of just tweaking it, doing some stuff, doing a body change to it, having some fun with it, and then selling it on and just getting my money back. But I don't see that happening. I like it too much. So I'm just going to have to live with no space to walk through my garage anymore. But that's it. Um, I'm ready for the open house tonight at the Brothers uh, Clubhouse. We're going to have a good old time. Hope you all have a great week and have a fantastic Father's Day. We'll talk soon. Love you all to death. Take care of each other out there. Bye.